Good day and welcome to this episode of Focus On with myself, Zanella Morrison. The Africa Green Hydrogen Summit is currently taking place in Cape Town, South Africa, and it's bringing together global leaders, investors, and innovators in the hydrogen energy landscape to engage in meaningful conversations that will help the sh to shape the future of clean energy across the continent. And what South Africa currently needs is a real world approach to developing green hydrogen ecosystems. So joining me now is Charles Dos Santos, Managing Director of Air Products, to expand on their current projects and their wish to accelerate green hydrogen energy uh, within South Africa. Charles, thank you so much uh, for your time. You know, there was a time where we were entering into this industry and that, that seems only yesterday. Uh, and now you are still chipping away at the challenge of not only developing green energy, but to, to build the entire ecosystem. So perhaps give us a view of what the reality looks like today on the ground. All right, no, thank you. Um, at, at this stage, what is, over the last couple of years, there's been a lot of hype created around the green hydrogen uh, economy that could develop. The, the challenge is it's a whole ecosystem that you've got to develop from scratch. Essentially, the whole supply chain for replacing what our what traditionally our hydrocarbon fuels um, and uh, related energy sources like natural gas and um, that has now got to be replaced by an infrastructure that supports hydrogen. And it's a very different uh, type of material to deal with than uh, what you would uh, deal with in the current hydrocarbon space. Mm -hmm. So in developing that, there's a lot of work that has to go on simultaneously. And a lot of it is going to have a chicken and egg type uh, situation where the development of the supply side is waiting for the development of the demand side, but the demand side is not going to confidently go ahead with the demand until there's confidence that they will have a good, a reliable supply. But further to that, the, and it's always going to come down to economics, um, economics is going to drive the rate of development. And if there's limited slow development, the mass production that's required to make it economical is going to be slow. And as a result, there's going to be a lot less of uptake in green hydrogen. So that poses a major challenge at the moment. And uh, you cannot rely on subsidies. I mean, uh, there is uh, some countries in the world where there's significant subsidies available, but in the long term, those subsidies are, are not going to be sustainable. You need to be able to stand on your two feet uh, eventually. Maybe in the short term, the um, subsidies will help to get elements of this ecosystem in place, but eventually it has got to stand on its own. Mm. Charles, it's not a small challenge at all. Um, going back to the value chain itself, um, now, developing all these animals, you can't have a break, right? You can't have a piece that's not linking in the value chain. Is there is there now clarity on the complete value chain and other 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 hooks at least tied to each other? And now we're looking at um, the implementation or the scaling. You know, so so where are we at in terms of just making sure that all the hooks are, are connected together or connecting um, where required? So. Our view on this is really that you've got to use what as much of, as possible of existing infrastructure um, in order to enable the, this ecosystem to develop. So then you can focus on the, the missing links, but there's another element to it. You can't be too purist. What I mean by that is if you're going to go for green hydrogen, Immediately, you're going to have to have the whole sub-value chain green. And that is going to make it very much more difficult. And the economics and the timing is going to take a lot longer. So the view is that we're suggesting here is that you take as much of the 
existing value chain in terms of hydrogen infrastructure and hydrogen production capabilities and use that to develop the, the portions that are not yet in existence. So in practical terms, hydrogen is, is available in the market, but it, it's not yet necessarily green. Um, it can be, not, but the reality is most air, parts of the world, gray hydrogen is readily available, but green hydrogen isn't. Mm. So take that gray hydrogen and start to look at the inf developing the downstream infrastructure. So one of the key elements that uh, is going to result in a success of this ecosystem is going to be the conversion of the mobility space into green hydrogen, and which currently is based on predominantly diesel. And what do you need then? You need to convert the refueling systems, the distribution systems, to be able to supply your hydrogen to that market. So if we focus on that element of it, getting the logistics in place, getting the infrastructure to deliver the, the fuel into the vehicles, for instance, and also developing the vehicles in some shape or form in order to create the demand. And if by doing that, you, you then focus on those elements. And then as time progresses, it becomes easier to transition to green as more green hydrogen becomes available or it becomes more cost effective because mass production. But on the demand side, which is actually more critical, um, in order to go green hydrogen on the demand side, let's for, stick to the mobility space for now, um, you would need to development of fuel cells, fuel cell vehicles. The challenge here is fuel cell vehicles are not readily available because they're not mass produced. And secondly, the cost of producing them is still at this stage very, very high. So in many companies in the current economic environment in South Africa, it wouldn't be something they would readily uh, take up uh, because it just would be challenging in the, under the current economic environment. So you actually need to find a cost-effective way of creating that demand. So one example of that would be, okay, well, let's wait for the fuel cells to become more mass-produced and lower cost. But while we're waiting, why don't we look at hybrid solutions where we can take existing diesel engines, convert them to run on diesel hybrids. It's not pure 100% hydrogen uh, operation, but it penetrates that market to start reducing carbon footprint. But secondly, it starts to create the infrastructure required to deliver that hydrogen to the market. And then as fuel cell vehicles become readily available and as they become more cost effective, the market is quite con will be quite confident to do to convert because they wouldn't be concerned that the supply chain doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. so, so this is about a halfway mark um, that really makes a lot of sense because even from a change and adaptation point of view, it just makes it easier for customers, you know, to move halfway. And then hopefully we don't lose the, the passion to go all the way, you know, to completely green energy. Um, so, so, but now there's a lot of partnerships that are required uh, along this. Maybe you can speak to us about the partnership between Toyota and Valterra as well. So the, the whole value chain needs partners because no one entity has the technology or the capability to drive the whole value chain. So in, in terms of partnerships that we work with and uh, are necessary to get this value chain delivered, um, let's start with the production of hydrogen. We work closely with a company like Sassel to produce hydrogen. Um, we already have the infrastructure on the production and the supply to the marketplace, um, which is where air products are provides most of that. But then the downstream, you've got, a comp you've got to develop fuel cell vehicles. Fuel cell vehicles need platinum. The, the platinum group metals that are required are, mi are mined by a company like Volterra Platinum. So that is required to go into the, the fuel cell vehicle manufacturing. So you've also got to develop the fuel cell vehicle manufacturers. 
And then who are they? Well, a company like Toyota. Uh, they are they are manufacturing fuel cells uh, for their vehicles. Um, so you can see the whole value chain needs partners in very different spaces in 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 order for it to develop to this ecosystem that can stand alone as an alternative to the existing, let's call it hydrocarbon, high carbon based um, fuel supply system for mobility. You make my job just feel just way too easy. Um, and, uh, and I think there's a lot of really technical conversations happening. Uh, how do you then also weave in, I think, what, what often applies to a lot of industries and not sure, you know, to what degree um, this is, an, is a greenfield uh, uh, space for government, for policy, for regulation. Um, are you finding that um, you're developing it as you go or you actually have to go in and try to change things in order for this to progress a little bit faster. So in in very similar way, there are portions of it that already, let's call it, they are already the, the required standards and the required regulations. But there are portions of it that are new and are still in development. Um, it touches on the chicken and egg situation again, because as these uh, technologies develop, the standards need to keep up. And uh, and if you're not, if you don't have the st a visibility of the standards that you are going to um, have to co uh, comply with, or, or the regulations that you have to comply with, um, it also makes it a little bit difficult to develop the technology. Uh, but then those regulations need to know and understand the technology in order to appropriately regulate or standardize in that space. Charles, thank you so much. I wish I was with you in Cape Town. It's really an, a, a very captivating conversation. You are having the African Green Hydrogen Summit, so wishing you all the best uh, for that and look forward to engaging with you sometime in the future. And that was Charles DeSantos, Managing Director from Air Products. Uh, from myself, Daniel Morrison, it's goodbye for now. We'll catch you on the next episode of Focus On.